Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Hacksmith Q&A. On this episode, we're gonna be talking about the Iron Man Plasma Gauntlet because you guys had tons of awesome questions about it and the future of our very own Iron Man suit. First of all, one of the most common questions was, how do we actually turn it on? Well, the grounding clamp actually has a limit switch on the thumb, and that limit switch activates the extension for the plasma nozzle. And then when the plasma nozzle is at full extension, that's what triggers it to power on. So that way you can't turn it on while it's inside the gauntlet and cut the gauntlet. That would be inconvenient. Can it be made more portable? That's another great question. A lot of people ask, that's a pretty big backpack, there's a lot of circuitry in there, is there a way of making it smaller? And actually there is. Technically, to make a plasma cutter, all you need is a DC power source and an air supply. The reason we use the plasma cutter is because of the pre-arc. Remember when you saw that beam of plasma that comes out? If you just use a battery, you don't get that, but you can still cut through things. It's called using a scratch start technology. So there is a way to actually reduce that backpack to just batteries and an air tank. Yeah. Can you use it without the grounding clamp? So yeah, you can run the pilot arc, which is just a very low energy uh, plasma to without the grounding clamp at all, but it doesn't reach the same temperature or the same amount of energy. So you wouldn't be able to cut through much which we actually showed when I wrote Iron Man is here on the concrete wall. Why don't you use graphene? So the reason we can't really work with graphene right now is because it's one of those uh, media sensationalized materials. Graphene stronger than steel, more flexible than this, blah, blah, blah. I actually discovered you can order sheets of graphene off McMaster car, so I bought one. It's a thousandth of an inch thick and it costs $60. That's like 10 times thinner than a sheet of paper. So even if we were able to turn this into this, can you imagine how expensive that would be? It would probably be like, yeah. what, like 20, $30,000 worth of graphene. In order to match that same thickness, we need 65 of those sheets. So that's already like, I don't know, what's 60 times 65, a big number. And like, I paid a lot of money for this, so I don't want to rip it, but I'm pretty sure you could still rip it like paper. Yeah. So even though everyone's like, oh, it's stronger than steel, 100, whatever, it's only in specific cases. Have you ever thought about putting a video out on how you model things like armor on SOLIDWORKS? I have lots of practice in software, but armor is the one thing I can't do. So literally in that video, this was Bogdan's first attempt at doing armor. And if you look at the SOLIDWORKS model, no offense, Bogdan. It doesn't look that great because it is actually really hard in SOLIDWORKS to do curved features and whatnot. So the SOLIDWORKS model is actually mostly flat bends yep. and a few curves. So it doesn't actually look anything like this. But to answer your question, we are hoping to do some tutorials on probably the Hacksmith Vlogs channel or maybe a new channel in the future. We just don't currently have the throughput to be able to make videos on that as well. So Mr. So, Mr. Simichg. Mr. Simich. So, Mr. Ship. Mr. Underscore Simich on Instagram asks, Hey, it might be a stupid question, but when you guys finish the whole Iron Man suit, will you produce it en masse for actual use, or is it just a one-time and private project just for your studio? It's a good question. So, this Iron Man suit, uh, a, the features we want to add are going to be quite unsafe and we don't want to be releasing that to the main public. Basically, whatever Iron Man suit we make, it is still going to be a prototype. So we'd have to be really certain that we're actually able to manufacture on scale and sell a product. Otherwise, we could just see the business go bankrupt. So currently we have no plans of mass producing Iron Man suits. But if we come up with something cool, who knows? What would the suit be named? The Hack Machine? You got any ideas? I, I don't. The, the Iron Hack? The Iron Hack. Why iron at all? Stainless? Yeah, we're not even using iron. I mean... Stainless man! <laughs> wow, which CAD software did you use in the video? So in the video, we're actually using SOLIDWORKS and we've got a link in the description if you'd like to check out more. Which brings me to another point. We put so much stuff in the description. Open that description if you ever have any questions about the video. We put our tools in there, sometimes the parts, links to circuit diagrams, uh, even the music credits if you're curious what music we used in the video. There's lots of great info down there. Wouldn't it be possible to also use hinges for the fingers and make the finger pieces overlap a little bit so they are hidden? 
So it is theoretically possible to use hinges, but the problem is your finger doesn't hinge at the top or the bottom. It hinges in the middle. So the hinge would have to be on either side of the finger and not at the top or the bottom for it to move properly. And that's really hard to incorporate, especially if you're making it handmade and not using something like 3D printing. Question, can you connect Edith into a suit? Probably. So we currently have our own Jarvis system in the facility. And while it's not quite a full AI, it is a full home automation setup. So we're able to control the entire facility. And the neat thing is we can access that uh, Jarvis using any phone or Bluetooth headset or anything, which means we could put it into the Iron Man helmet super easily. Next up, we have some video submissions from some of our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. If you guys want to be featured in the next Hacksmith Q&A video, make sure you support us on Patreon or the YouTube member program. How long did it take to make the gauntlet? And how comfortable is it to wear? First of all, I love the shirt, the hat, and the Hacksmith mug, which I am also drinking out of. Sorry, what was the question again? Description below. <laughs> <laughs> so from the start of the modeling to releasing the second video is about two months. Uh, and is it comfortable? No, not really. Both me and James have had shoulder problems since filming the video. <laughs> yeah, even just holding your arm up with the full gauntlet. It's not, it's not that heavy. It probably weighs maybe like 15 pounds in total. But if you're like trying to cut through a wall like this constantly, it's it pretty tiring. The Hacksmith. Um, first of all, how's quarantine? Um, how hot can a plasma gauntlet get? The plasma gauntlet doesn't get too hot. All the heat, which is a lot of heat, almost 20,000. So we've got almost 20,000 degrees Celsius coming out of the tip of here. But luckily, as you can see, it's actually pretty far away from the gauntlet and the plasma nozzle itself is actually also kind of thermally insulated from the glove. Now, when I was cutting through the car, I did almost burn myself multiple times, but that wasn't from the plasma, it was from the molten metal splashing back at me. And in fact, the heat transfer of the nozzle is so concentrated that the actual body that holds it to the cylinder is plastic, so even that doesn't melt. My question was, when you fully build the whole Iron Man suit, how are you planning to hide the uh, controls and circuit boards and power supply for the uh, plasma cutter. So if we do end up building a full suit, big if there, uh, hopefully we'll be able to hide all the stuff in the actual chest piece behind your back, just like a backpack, but it'd be part of the whole suit. Uh, and if we custom design all the circuitry and all the batteries to be universal across the suit, it'll hopefully be a lot smaller as well. Hey there, Hacksmith. I wanted to know how long the batteries on your Iron Man gauntlet last. So the battery pack in the plasma gauntlet actually lasts for about 10 to 15 minutes. Of cutting. Of, of cutting. And to put that in perspective, the car I cut up into pieces almost took that long and the batteries are fine at the end. And that kind of makes sense. Like how often are you going to actually use this thing? As long as you can use it for as long as you need to use it for the specific thing you're doing. Yeah, the actual cutting path for a gauntlet takes about two and a half minutes. So you'd be able to make four gauntlets using the battery life of one. That's a good point. Do you ever wonder if Robot Daddy Jr. 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 Do you ever wonder if Robert Downey Jr. watches your videos? I do wonder if Robert Downey Jr. watches our videos. I kind of doubt it, but it would be really cool if he did. But is it bulletproof? No. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> no. How much thick can it be cut through? Two C's. Two, two C's. <laughs> what is the most expensive tool you have used in your workshop and what did it cost? You are the Hacksmith in 2023, flying a full replica Iron Man suit. Think that's possible? That's three years from now. Well, I mean, if we team up with gravity and uh, we make some kind of flying armor, I don't see why not. Definitely. <laughs> Now we're going to take some suggestions on what we can do on this Iron Man suit in the future. Amazing video. You should make Iron Man's freeze cannons in Infinity War. That could be cool. Uh, we could quite easily reuse the maze ice cannon. Yeah. Or we go an even cooler route and use liquid nitrogen, somewhat like uh, what Colin Furs did a few years ago. Paint a hot rod red. 
So, I got some exciting news for you. Bogdan is already working on building the left-handed gauntlet, which may or may not be a collaboration with a certain Styropyro to make a real-life Iron Man repulsor. And we're actually sending it out to be professionally ceramic coated, which is almost like the titanium gold alloy coating that Iron Man does in the movies. Hot rod, hot rod red and gold. So stay tuned for that one. All right, huge thank you to everyone who asked their questions. We're gonna start doing these Q&A videos on every single project, or at least all the big projects. On, on future projects, make sure you leave a comment below. If you guys wanna have a chance at being in a Hacksmith Q&A video, make sure you check out our Patreon page or YouTube memberships program so your video can be featured in our next Q&A. Thanks for watching.